The house that Jack built is in my opinion the most controversial and divisive film to come out in 2018. It's also one of the most thought-provoking films I've seen this year that raises mountains of unanswered philosophical questions regarding the nature of art, the beauty of death, the randomness of the universe, and it serves as an exploration for the filmmaker himself, Lars von Trier. Now most of the film is pretty straightforward about its overall approach, and the questions that it raises is left for the audience to decide. But the final 20 minutes of the film goes down a more visually metaphorical path that I believe left some room for ambiguity and interpretation. This isn't going to be as extensive as my previous explanation analysis videos, but I wanted to just shed light on my interpretation of the ending that I thought was insightful. So this interpretive moment in the third act initiates after Jack is forced to go out and buy a full metal jacket bullet after one of his victims points out that he has the wrong bullet. Jack tries to get the correct bullet at his local gun store, but the gun store owner gives him a hard time about a receipt and an ID. So he's forced to go to a different person he knows that has the bullet, but he ends up being cornered by him due to an apparent suspicion about a robbery, and he calls the cops on Jack. But through Jack's sociopathic trickery, he's able to gain some of his trust and murder him with a knife. He also ends up shooting the cop that was called on him, steals the cop car, and drives straight to his freezer so he can carry out the horrendous act of murdering multiple people with one full metal jacket bullet. He positions himself to make the shot, but realizes it's too blurry due to him being too close. So he uses the pipe to finally bust open the back door to the freezer that he's been trying to open the entire film in order to give him more space for the shot. Keep in mind that he is fully aware that this will be his last set of murders before he gets caught, and he seems more or less content with that. Before he is able to make the shot, he hears the voice of the person that we've been hearing philosophically morally arguing with Jack the entire film named Verge. Verge reminds Jack that he never was able to build his perfect house, so he encourages him to make one out of the dead corpses. So Jack does exactly that. Which to me simply symbolizes Jack as a failed artist who is forced to settle with a house made out of the product of his own immoralities. And while Jack is building the house of corpses, you can see the cops slowly torching the freezer down. Verge then leads Jack down a hold, which is where the film begins to get much weirder than what most people expected. The popular belief about this ending is that the hole Jack and Verge go down leads to the depths of hell due to the iconic visual references to Dante's Inferno and the obvious judgement that occurs at the very end. And I do agree with the notion that this is a form of hell that Jack is experiencing. There's certainly no doubt about that. But I think there's much more to this ending that I haven't really heard anybody talk about yet. Throughout the entire film, through all of the sadistic murders that Jack carries out, he is unable to open the back door to the freezer that seemed to be permanently frozen shut. It's not until he gets cornered by law enforcement, which is basically him realizing that his jig is up, that he is able to bust the back door open. And once he opens the door and begins to align his shot, we, the audience, are revealed the voice of the person that we've been hearing Jack argue with the entire film about the moral nature of his heinous acts. So to me, Jack's freezer represents his mind, the frozen shut back door represents the part of his brain that contains some sort of moral conscience, and Verge, of course, represents the conscience itself. And the reason why the back door was frozen shut is because it represents how he has been unable to access the morally ethical and empathetic part of his mind for his entire life. At some point of his life, his moral ethics and conscience were buried and locked away so far into his subconscious that he was unable to confront it or access it in any way. But now, he is able to access it due to his inevitable impending doom that forced him to confront his conscience at the end of the film. And the hell that he is experiencing is also a product of his mind in my opinion. Once Jack enters the back room, he is exploring a deeper part of his mind. And once they go down the hole and through the underground caves, both Jack and his conscience are going further and further into Jack's mind. And notice Jack's response to Verge when asked what he would like to know. Jack says that he wants to know everything. This is an example of Jack's narcissism showing in a slightly more subtle way. They reach a point within the layers of Jack's deep subconscious where he is shown the only innocent and harmless memory he had as a child that involves him hearing and watching field workers cut grass with their scythes in unison. And one interesting aesthetic touch to this scene is how the sound is silent for a moment except for the sound of panting from the workers. You see Jack mimicking the pant until the audio comes in full circle. This is another reason why I feel like this is occurring inside his mind because it's accurate to how people remember and perceive old memories. Human beings subconsciously cling to certain sounds, 
certain images, and even certain smells that can bring them back to an old memory. We then see Jack shed only one single tear as he's combining his innocent memory with the images of all the people he sadistically murdered. This is the only time Jack has felt any kind of remorseful emotion to anything that he's done. And even then, we only get one single tear. When Jack finally reaches the Bridge of Judgment, we can see that his bridge has quite literally been burned. Hence the saying, to burn one's bridges, which obviously translates to one destroying their path, opportunities, connections, usually in an intentional way. Below the bridge is the pit of hell filled with the screams of the suffering. I'd like to think that the hellish lava represents the suffering of all the victims that he personally tortured and murdered, rather than the suffering of all of humanity, but either way is valid in my eyes. Across the bridge is a way out, but as we can see, he burnt his bridge a long time ago. But like the narcissist he is, Jack still tries to find a way around the bridge, which is basically him just symbolically refusing to respectfully take accountability for his heinous and unforgivable actions. He tries to climb around it, but eventually fails and falls straight into the hellfire because that's what he rightfully deserves. Well, alright, that's my quick, personal interpretation of the ending of the house that Jack built. I hope you were all able to find this insightful in some way, as I hopefully intended. Please share your thoughts in the comment section below regarding my interpretation, and also give me your own interpretations. Thank you so much for clicking on this video, and if you really enjoyed what I had to say, please give it a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content.